So, let's continue. Iba na suot ko, no? <laughs> Bisa ko bigla. Okay. Um, obviously, I'm not shooting this all in one day. Okay. Goals of a business. Lahat ng business may goal. There is a goal. What are goal? Basically, at ba talaga? Ano ba talaga mga goal? To sell a product or service? Yeah, that is a good goal. Any, any business should sell a product or a service. Keep customers happy. Obviously, we want them to be happy. Outperform the competition. Dapat mas magaling tayo. Dapat mas madami tayong mabenta. Dapat matalo sila. Kahit sari-sari store. Uh, keep uh, stakeholders happy. Ano bang stakeholder? Who is a stakeholder? Stakeholder is anyone that benefits from the business. They have a concern for the business. So it could be the shareholders, could be the owners, could be the officers, could be the employees, could even be the customers. All of these are stakeholders, and we want the stakeholders to be happy. But what is the underlying goal of any business? Really, it is to make money. Gano ka daming pera? How much money? Madami. Any business, their goal is to make tons of money. Okay? So, ano ba yung pera na nakuha mo sa business? What is that money? That money is really revenue revenue you get revenue from the business and you subtract all your expenses that becomes your profit that is your money now ano ngayon kung may pera kumikita ka ba or hindi it is important that what you earn is higher than zero i'm just saying that it should be in the positive region dapat positive ang pera na nakukuha mo sa isang business hindi negative, hindi zero. Pag zero, break even, parang wala kang kinita. Kung positive, mas madami ka pang kinikita. Pag negative, wala kang kinikita. So, what is the whole reason of even doing all this business? Okay, so, this may sound basic. It sounds like it's very ordinary, but uh, it's just a constant reminder. So, sometimes we could be so busy in the business part of it, and just passes our mind sometimes we don't even realize if we're making money okay so having that in mind increase profits is what you need and how do you do that you increase sales how do you increase sales there's different ways and one thing is to increase the capacity if you're accepting jobs and you're already at your limit gusto mo na mag tap out tap out hindi ko na kaya but how could you have more money if you can't even accept more projects because you can't do it then you have to increase your capacity increase capability let's say you are doing link building right now you don't know how to do on page uh, let's say uh, you don't know how to do a 301 redirect and you are coming with a specific client that needs these needs and you don't know it because you only do link building then how could you increase that money if your capabilities are limited, then you have to increase that capabilities. It could be done in different ways. Either train yourself, hire more people, outsource it. There's many different solutions there. Now, another thing is increased competency. You might know all of this, but you are not the best. Or you know that there's tons of rooms for improvement. And you have competitors out there. Some of them are very good. So how could you show your clients that you are more competent, you are better? Dapat mas magaling ka. So, looking at these three C's, increase capabilities, increase competency, increase capacity, these help out increasing sales. The more sales you get, the, and the, assuming the less your expenses don't increase, then the more profits you earn. And that is the goal. You want to increase more money. Any business, that's basic. It's not even an SEO basic. Anyone that's running a business, and your business could be part of a company, could be your concern for the company you're working with, it could be your own freelance business, your own company, your own small business. That is the main goal, to increase profits. Distorbo, nagre-ring pa yung phone ko. Okay, so... Knowing all of that, knowing all of that about the business where we want to increase money, let's give an overview of the whole SEO business, okay? Now, in any SEO industry, you basically have a SEO business transaction. You have a business contract. You have an agreement between you and your client, okay? And your client is your SEO customer. You are the SEO service provider. Now, in, any, in the SEO industry, there's different kinds of customers, you know? 
There's the super large corporations, Fortune 500, popular brand names, mga sikat na sila, malalaki, mukhang pera. Small to medium-sized business, they have a large company, they're very profitable, they probably make millions, but they are not worldwide, their brand is not known, but it's still a good business, they still make the money, they're still considered small, although small could be earning millions. There's the micro business. These are very small businesses. Um, uh, They're, you know, um, probably with a small amount of employees. Um, uh, maybe the owner is highly involved. You may be talking to the owner of the business when you do SEO with them. Unlike in the larger companies, you don't even talk to the owner. You don't talk to the president. You talk to the marketing staff and whoever. And lastly is you could get a customer that owns their own website. Like it's really small. I have a blog. I need blog messages. So I want to do SEO. How do I do that? Now, the SEO person, uh, provider, the SEO service provider, um, if it's a very large company, often the person that does that is the online marketing agency. Why? Because they need lots of tasks, they need lots of reports, they need lots of presentations. You need more people, you need more resources. Often it's the agency that caters to these larger companies. Then you have the smaller SEO company. Who's going to do that? Then, and who, what type of company? Let's say you have a small company owned by yourself, or you have a few employees you've partnered with, or four of you are all partners in the whole business, all of you have specific tasks and the, the clients you have are, let's say, uh, 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 a small um, auto repair shop in various locations, let's say two branches. It's not really worldwide, it's not nationwide, but it's good and profitable and it's big, okay? You also have the, the micro business, the micro business, it's pretty small. Let's say uh, uh, an affiliate marketer, but that's very successful that they work from home. They don't really have any employees. They have one website. They make, let's say, uh, $5,000 a month. And they're willing to share or spend about $500,000 on, on uh, getting some type of freelance SEO to help them, help them uh, further increase the sales. And you've noticed I've colored, you know, the, the dark the dark orange with the dark orange, the lighter orange with the lighter orange, showing like often these are the types of partnerships. Although it's not always the case, it's pretty flexible. But for your own website, who does the SEO for that? Most of the time you do your own SEO. You own a website, you have a blog, you have a whatever, you have a forum and you're monetizing it. Most of the time you do it yourself. Why? Because you, you can't really afford to be a large SEO company to do it. And uh, you tend to learn things, you know, uh, uh, by yourself. And it, it, it's really not that hard as long as you have the passion to learn and do so. So, uh, that was just an overview of the industry. And looking at the industry, you know, I, I talked about the large company, the large agency, the small SEO company, uh, the SEO freelancer. Just bear in mind and determine where you are in there. And once you do know where you are, um, it already gives you kind of a scale in your head or a range of what type of clients am I targeting? Let's go quickly back to that slide. What type of clients we are targeting? Um, uh, that tells us who... Uh, you know, what type of realistic goal of, of what type of client you could get. Uh, let's say you're a freelance SEO, you work at home, and Sony came up with some uh, calling to the public saying we need some type of SEO company, we're looking, send us your proposals. Now you being the freelance SEO guy sending out a proposal, most probably you won't be chosen at all. Sony is going to ask tons of questions. They're going to ask all about your business. Who are you? Who's your team? How much time you have? And so on. And if they see, oh, I'm a one man, they may not even pick you. And it's not, it's not a degrading issue. It's not a miss. Uh, it's not a, a, a wrong assessment issue. It's actually a right assessment issue because 
if you have worked for one of these companies, they ask for so many things. They ask for so many reports. It's going to really be difficult and hard. Even I myself, where I've worked with these clients, I would never accept them as a client only for myself. I wouldn't. I, I just know I'm not capable of doing it. I really need a team. I really need a big team to do that. Okay?